Mary's Christmas Yarn. Hi, I'm Paul, Chief Executive of Child Fund New Zealand. A group of talented New Zealanders have come together to bring you Mary's Christmas Yarn. This is the story of Mary and her pet lamb, Rosemary. Mary sets out on a journey of discovery to find out why children living in poverty overseas could possibly want a sheep for Christmas. We hope you enjoy our yarn. And on behalf of all the children you help through Child Fund, thank you and best wishes for the festive season. Chapter 1 Rosemary, Mum's going to blow her stack if she finds you inside again. Bah! bleated the tiny lamb, skipping happily around Mary's bedroom, knocking over a lamp in a doll's house before disappearing out the glass doors that led to the deck. Mary, are you awake? Mum called from the depths of the house. It's time to get up. The animals are protesting. Mary glanced at her bedside clock. Five minutes past eight already. She'd slept in after staying up the night before writing her Christmas list for Santa. No wonder Rosemary had nuzzled her way through the glass doors to come and wake her owner. Mary had felt the lamb's soft little nose on her cheek just before opening her eyes. Most mornings, Mary was up by half past seven, gumboots on, feeding the house pets in the back garden. By that time, her father had usually headed out on the farm with his crew of lean, restless working dogs. Together, farmer and dogs would spend the days travelling across the vast sheep station, completing the many tasks required to keep the big farm running. Mary's job was to care for the animals at home. There was Tibbles, the tabby cat, nine years old and slightly grumpy these days, the two guinea pigs, Penny and Sooty, who lived in the hutch under the apple tree, Harry, the golden spaniel who slept on mum and dad's bed even though he wasn't supposed to, and her beloved lamb, Rosemary. Mary jumped out of her bed, raced to the back door, and pulled her gumboots over her pyjama pants. Tibbles, who'd been yowling by her food bowl, wound her tail around Mary's legs, and as the girl stood, she almost toppled over. Tibbs, I know you're hungry, but you're second in line. I have to make up Rosemary's milk first. Mary ran into the shed, grabbed the glass bottle, and poured in a measure of milk powder. She topped it up with water and attached a teat. She felt the lamb press against her knee. There you are, Miss Rosemary, your morning treat, but I've got a much better one planned for your Christmas day. Chapter 2 Mary had lots of treats on her Christmas list. At the top of her list were the red shoes. They were like little ballet shoes. She could dance in them, maybe on a stage, and everyone would be looking at her beautiful red shoes. Mary raised her arms and started to dance around the yard, dragging Rosemary with her. Suddenly, Mary heard her mother calling her. Mary, what on earth are you doing with that poor lamb? Leave her be and feed this cat before I strangle her. (laughs) Sorry, Mum, said Mary with a giggle. Sorry, Miss Rosemary, as she put her lamb down. Mary was just getting Tibbles' treat ready when Mum called out again. Mary, phone call for you. For me, said Mary. She didn't usually get phone calls. Who is it, she asked. My crazy sister, said Mum. Who else is up at this time? Where is she, said Mary, running to the phone. She loved it when her auntie rang. Timbuktu, for all I know, said Mum. Mary's aunt was an aid worker for Child Fund New Zealand. She often called from overseas, exotic places like Kenya and Sri Lanka and Vietnam. Mary loved hearing about the adventures she had when she was over there. Hello, Auntie, where are you? asked Mary. Back in Auckland, trying to sort out my flat, her aunt said. I hear you're teaching sheep to dance. (laughs) No, silly, she laughed. I was just having fun with Rosemary. Ah, your pet lamb, said Auntie. You're so lucky to have her. Lots of people would love to have a lamb like that. Like Rosemary, said Mary. A bit like Rosemary, maybe a bit older. More of a sheep. I know lots of people who would love a sheep for Christmas. A 
sheep for Christmas? That would be a silly Christmas present. How would you wrap it? asked Mary. With love, Mary. With love, said Auntie. Chapter 3 Mary giggled. Instead of imagining a paddock full of sheep wrapped in rustling Christmas paper, she was now wondering what a sheep wrapped in love would look like. Perhaps each one covered in red lipstick smooches. Not literally wrapped in love, funny girl, protested Auntie. Sheep are very useful animals. They're not just for dancing and playing with. Mary suddenly knew what her auntie meant. She squared her shoulders bravely and announced, I know you can eat sheep, auntie. Uncle Sammy says all the time that he loves little lambs as long as they're roasted or grilled. Even though he named her, he's always looking at Rosemary greedily, but I'll never let her be eaten, never, ever. Wait a minute, scary Mary, auntie laughed. That's not what I was getting at. Mary breathed out. Well, then what? Well, it's sharing time, isn't it? Today, I want you to go and see Cousin Arana in the wool shed. I think you've got some learning to do. Later that day, Mary sat on the wooden stairs of the wool shed with Arana, and Rosemary nestled beside her. Inside, sweating, red-faced men and women wearing singlets and shorts and heavy hard boots were shearing dozens of sheep. The fleece came off in long, cascading peels, leaving a nearly naked sheep to slide down the chute. Its fleece was white as snow, sang Mary, as the wool fell away in every shade of white and cream. It smelled warm and musty in the wool shed, as Jackie the wool classer sorted the wool into different piles. So, Arana said, this wool will end up all around the world. Some of it will become blankets, even carpet. It might even end up at the top of Mount Everest. Mount Everest, Mary exclaimed. Yes, Arana said. Some of the best wool will be used to make the warmest clothes, the sort that can help you conquer the world. Mary imagined herself plunging the New Zealand flag into the top of Mount Everest, her merino wool top proudly warming her skin. Look, there's Finley and Hannah in the garden, said Arana, interrupting her fantasy. They've got a yarn that'll make your hair curl. Chapter 4 They certainly did. Finley and Hannah were the next-door neighbours. They ran a small cropping farm and they'd brought some seed potatoes for the garden so they could be planted in time for Christmas. Mary ran out to meet them, Rosemary racing behind. Arana says you've got something hair-raising to tell me. Oh, he did, did he? Hannah laughed. Not really. I was out riding and the horse threw me off into the electric fence. I'm okay. Her hair really did stand up on end, said Finley. If I hadn't been so worried, I would have laughed. He dumped the bag of spuds on the lawn beside an empty veggie bed. Rosemary was around Mary's feet as she was talking, nuzzling her in that urgent, butting way that made Mary think she was wanting milk. Soon she skipped off, bleating at Finley and Hannah as they sauntered back to their ute. Mary came inside with poo on her shoes. She wasn't far across the kitchen floor when her dad, in from the shearing shed, yelled, Out! Outside! Look at your shoes! Mary did, sheepishly. Oh, yuck. Sorry. Later, when she'd cleaned both the shoes and the floor, she told her dad that she wished Rosemary could learn to poo in the garden like Tibbles did. Actually, said Mum, overhearing, that would be really useful. Sheep poo is fantastic for a garden. Is it? asked Mary. Dad's always picking Tibbles' poo up out of the garden when he sees it. Yeah, but cats eat meat and processed stuff like biscuits, said Dad. Their poo's got nasty organisms in it. Sheep eat grass, so their poo's okay. Even better if they're fed hay or grain, that makes it richer. In fact, sheep poo is just about the best manure you can put on a garden. Not only that, added Mum, I read the other day they're making paper out of sheep manure. Paper? Yeah, they sterilise the poo. They wash it so only the fibres left that the sheep haven't digested. And then they use it for paper. Mary thought about that. If they did more of that, she said, we wouldn't need to cut down as many trees. Exactly, replied Mum. And if more people put the poo on the garden, we wouldn't need as many fertilisers. Proper poo. 
proper poo properly put on our property, said her dad, beginning a tongue twister. Mary finished it and put precisely in the proper places. Primo, said mum. Now say it fast five times. After that conversation, Mary's respect for Rosemary grew a bit more. She was just a little lamb, but she could do a power of good in the world. Chapter 5 After the poo tongue-twisters had everyone laughing themselves stupid, Mary's mum got the conversation back on track with talk of lunch. The alliteration had to stop when Dad started with Mother Goose's classic of Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper and Mary eventually morphed it into Polly Piper pinged a piece of prickly pongy poo but it was stopped mid-sentence. Mum said it was getting out of hand and it would end in tears. She was probably right. Finley had come back indoors briefly to take something back home next door and he'd started competing loudly with silly rhymes before the ute horn tooted and he and his still shocking-looking hair raced off. It was all good fun, but mums just seem to know when silly funny things start to turn bad. Righto, lunch is up, you two word maestros. Dad and Mary sat down to their usual weekend lunch. Fresh bread mum had made in the bread maker the night before, and a selection of things to put on it. Last night's leftover roast lamb, not rosemary of course, an anonymous lamb, lovely yellow New Zealand butter, some mayonnaise and the good old iceberg lettuce. Mary always liked cheese in her sandwiches. My lovely dairy queen, Dad whimsically laughed as he tousled her hair. A true farm girl, she did so love her dairy food. Huge glasses of fresh creamy milk, cheese, butter, all things she ate every day. You know, muttered Mum between mouthfuls, when you ring your aunt back to tell her what you found out when you saw cousin Arana in the bullshed, you should impress her with all the other things you found out about the usefulness of sheep. What, the poo? started Dad, obviously not quite over the fit of the giggles they'd had earlier. After Mum gave him that withering, are you on my side here or what, look, she continued. Well, yes, the manure. Plus, there's something else they're very useful for. She gestured at the milk. But this is cow's milk, said Mary. True enough, said Dad, his voice now a sensible octave lower. But sheep make milk too, you know, and from milk you can make all sorts of things, like cheese. Mary was eating a good old slice of plain cheddar cheese. But she'd learnt that some of the fancier cheeses in the world, like feta and ricotta and romano, were all made from sheep's milk. New Zealand didn't milk sheep, but some other countries did. She could see that a lamb like rosemary could be a very helpful gift for a family who needed the basics, such as milk. She was musing about how impressed her aunt would be when she rang her back that night, when rosemary's wet little nose butted her on her leg, snapping her out of her daydreaming. Rosemary had pushed her way through the kiddie, a.k.a. lamb gate, at the back door and wanted her lunch too. Oh, yes, milk, Mary said. Your milk. I'll go get your bottle. Come on, Rosemary. <laughs>